welcome to Our Life in Books, where we talk about our lives, books, and everything in between. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Samantha. And, and we're cousins. cousins. Click, 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 click. <laughs> all right. This is October new release episode. We're Yay. so excited to talk about all the books. So many books. So many books. So many. But first, what tea are we drinking? We are drinking the Bat Brew Tea, which is part of the Wicked Teas collection from Adagio Teas. Go Let's ahead. Sorry. No, you did it last time and you the could actually see it. Tea. The Wicked Teas. Oh, this is so it's cute. Like a little collection. I think, yeah, there's six teas. Um, there's some decaf. I feel like there's an herbal one. Yes. And then the rest are black teas, I think. And that's what we're drinking. But, yeah, this is the Bat Brew. This one has chocolate chai, chocolate chips, um, green sugar crystals, and I I saw sprinkles in there. Yeah, there's a little sprinkle. Oh, yeah. They used, they used to do bat shake sprinkles, but they don't do that anymore. <laughs> like, now that's it's so expensive. Like, yeah, a little sprinkle. Just circle sprinkles now. <laughs> They're colorful. They're so cute. That's fun, but it's pretty good. It's really good. I like it. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> ah, so what are you reading? So um, I actually just finished a book. So I'm listening to To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher I always forget how to say this. Christopher Paolini. Paolini? Hmm. I think so. I think that's how you say it. Um it's a space opera. Um, oh. <laughs> Didn't expect that coming. It's set, like, in the future. Um, so this lady has done all these, like, space missions, and she's a scientist. Uh, Kira, sorry. Her name's Kira. Um, she's done all these missions and stuff, and she finally is, like, ready to settle down with her partner, and they're engaged and all this stuff. And then, obviously, a uh, disaster hits, and the queen dies. <sighs> So what makes it an opera? Is there singing? That's no. They call it space opera. It's like a oh. drama, like a drama in space. Oh, yeah. okay. I yeah. was like, that's why I made the like. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a space drama. Ooh, it sounds so good. How did you find it? Are you reading it for a tour or anything like that? Um. So actually, Macmillan Audio, their Instagram, they reached out to me on Instagram and said, "Hey, we've." Seen that you post about some audiobooks sometimes. Would you like to be part of our influencer newsletter? And oh, that's like, so yes. cool. And yeah, they're like, also yes, like, what would you like to receive to sleep in a sea of stars to start out? And I was like, uh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I got that, started listening, and they actually just sent the newest um, list over. They call them ALCs. They're advanced listening copies. Oh. Um, so they sent that list over, and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I already have a bunch of books on Libro FM I need to listen to. And now I've got these. Yeah. I mean, I've got plenty of things to listen to, but it's overwhelming because <laughs> I want to listen to all of it. Yeah. You're like, can I please have more time in the day to listen to all of it? But yes, so far, this is really good. Oh, that sounds so good. And he is the author that wrote the Aragon series. <gasps> Shut up. Yeah. This is his first book after I should Aragon. recognize that no that name. Um, Yeah. Thank you for explaining to me the opera thing. I didn't understand it. <laughs> Over the head. So, are you reading anything? Yes. So, I actually just got done with, um, I can't remember what, but so I got Crush by Tracy Wolf. Oh, in that's the mail. Two. That's the number two of the Crave series. So, I'm so excited to see where they left off and see what's going on. I love these covers. I love them too. And there's going to be, it looks like there's going to be four books in the series so far. Um, it's Crave, Crush, Covet, and Court. Oh. So, pretty excited to dive deeper into this series. Heck yeah. Yes. No spoilers. Oh my god. Okay, well there's spoilers in the reviews. Yeah, don't. Someone gave a one-star review and said, I'm not going to read the spoiler part. But they said, I hated this book so much. <laughs> okay. Wow. But you read the first one, so <laughs> get out well, of here. Well, that's what they go on to talk about. Oh. It's spoilery. Rude. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, my Kindle Unlimited pick. We actually kind of picked together because we saw it on um, yeah. Goodreads on the banner. Uh, it's called Welcome to the United States of Anxiety, Observations from a Reforming Neurotic. I think this looks so good. I think it looks so cute. And f just like the tagline or the whole title just got us. Mm -hmm. um, when did the USA become shorthanded for the United States of Anxiety? 
From the moment Americans wake up, we're bombarded with all new terrifying news about crime, the environment, politics, and stroke-inducing foods we've been enjoying for years. We're judged by social media's faceless masses, pressured into maintaining a Pinterest-perfect home, and expected to base our self-worth on retweets, faves, likes, and followers. Our collective FOMO and the disparity between the ideal and reality is leading to us to spend more money and feel worse. No wonder we're getting twitchy. Save for an Independence Day-style alien invasion, how do we begin to escape from the stressors that make up our days? Jen Lancaster is here to take a hard look at our elevating anxieties, and with self-deprecating wit and level-headed wisdom, she charts a path out of the quagmire that keeps us frightened of the future and ashamed of our imperfectly perfect human lives. Take a deep breath and her advice, and you just might get through a holiday dinner without disowning, wanting to disown your uncle. I just think that sounds so perfect. So it sounds like it's part memoir, part self-help, some humor. Yes. Just kind of a little bit of everything. I think so, yeah. It looks like the genres are um, nonfiction, humor, memoir. So, yeah, I think I it just sounds really good. I just love the title so much. Same. It's so it's so perfect. It is. I'm so sorry. That's fine. Um, okay, so Prime Reading Rec. I have I'm Not Dying With You Tonight by Kimberly Jones and Gilly Seagal. Um, I read this book a while ago. I don't yes. Know what it was. Uh, I remember you talking about it. But it's very, very good. It's, um, well, I didn't link to Goodreads because I'm a moron. So and we Goodreads just talked about how we need to, like, link Goodreads. <laughs> but it says on here, um, it looks like Kimberly Jones is an NA, NAACP Image Award nominee. So That's if awesome. you if you haven't seen her video yet from, I think it was June 9th that it was posted, um, she has a video that went viral where she is very – heartfelt and very passionately talking about the Black Lives Matter movement and why it's Ooh, important. Oh, cool. Um, I'm pretty sure I reposted it on Facebook because I just, oh, and I didn't realize it was her when I first watched it. And yeah. Then, and then, like, it pops up on the bottom and says Kimberly Jones. I'm like, I don't even know that name. And I'm like, oh, my God, I read her book. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll, I'll read the synopsis. <laughs> Sorry, it looks like it was really long and it wasn't. <laughs> Lena has killer style, her awesome boyfriend, and a plan. She knows she's going to make it big. Campbell, on the other hand, is just trying to keep her head down and get through the year at her new school. When both girls attend the Friday night football game, what neither expects is for everything to descend into sudden mass chaos. Chaos born from violence and hate. Chaos that unexpectedly throws them together. They aren't friends. They hardly understand the other's point of view. But none of that matters when the city is up in flames and they only have each other to rely on if they're going to survive the night. Oh, sounds so good. And so it, yeah, it just takes place over one night. Um, and you know, some violence erupts in the city and it affects the football game. I don't remember exactly like how it all starts, but there are these two girls, you know, one black and one white. And so the story is from the two different girls point of views. And then each author wrote. Oh, that's so cool. And you're going to kill me, but this is, um, I got accepted this for a net galley and it's in my (gasps) It's in my phone. I know. Go read it. I know. It's actually a really, really quick read. Because... Well, and that's why I like read the synopsis and I was like, I need to read this book. And then it was like one of those that I just forgot. I, I went through a net galley forget yeah. phase. And I was like, I have this book. I need to go read it. Well, like I said, it only takes place over the course of a night. So it goes so quick. Yes. I love those kind of books. I like the, the idea of and them. And they, you know, it's like the girls learn from each other because they have very different point of views yeah Yeah. lives yeah Yeah. oh I love that okay so book world news I do want to talk about um something we talked about in episode 81 September new releases so a month ago okay (laughs) um we brought up um the topic of contemporary versus realistic fiction and we Mm -hmm. both were like isn't that the same thing Right. So I kind of researched. There's not a lot to look into about it. I think basically it is the same thing. They're interchangeable in a way. Um, I did find like two maybe distinguishing um, things about them, though. Okay. So contemporary fiction uh, is when a book takes place in a time period is written. If the book was written in the 80s and about a specific event in the 80s, then it's contemporary. Contemporary is a uh, broad term, though. You describe any event that could happen, love, marriage, finding a job, going to college, divorce, etc. Like something that real life would happen. Yeah. So that's what I looked up after you said that. I was like, 
what does contemporary mean? Because I always thought it meant like now, which it does, but because in the like in the descriptions it was saying like you know like Hemingway wrote about it, his books are contemporary because they're about the time he was living yes. in. Yes. Exactly. And so when realistic fiction is also when a book takes place today and is written today, but if the and the events and if the events occur in the book that are happening in today's society. But this usually describes something that has to do with like social issues or like like um protests, racial injustice, women rights, that kind of stuff where it becomes realistic fiction. Okay. So that was the only like two differences I could like the two like differences I could find. But like mm-hmm. they said like basically contemporary is more of a broad term and realistic is more of like happens with like yeah um social issues. I see. Yes. To be fair, like like the things you listed for contemporary fiction, like love, marriage, finding a job, that's all realistic. But it's not it's not it's more of a like realistic I think just means I've noticed that like um like books we've read like uh Angie Thomas yeah. and um, Evie is a boy and stuff like that. Those are realistic because it has to do with um, social issues. Yeah. That's, that's kind nice. of like what I've gathered. It, it There's not a lot on it. So if someone knows more than me, please let me know. Um, and I wrote, so to sum things up, in my opinion, I think the books highlighting social events happening today can be labeled as realistic fiction, but once time goes on and those books age, they become t- contemporary fiction. Okay. Um, also books that show love growing or anything that is mirroring real life and not highlighting social issues, they will just stay in contemporary. But that's just my opinion. I don't know. I am not a scholar. I just read the first couple pages of Google. Of Google. (laughs) (laughs) The Google help. The Google. Um, Okay. So our next, what is it? Book world news. I almost said announcement. Sorry. Um, (laughs) Goodreads. On Goodreads right now, it's horror week. Actually, they say celebrate the horror genre, Goodreads. But I think it's just a week thing because that's what it says in the... Uh, URL for a week. week. It Hurrah. doesn't actually say that on there, but you know, that's usually what Goodreads does. Maybe you need to read some of these. Aren't you complaining that you want to be scared from the book? I do. My only problem is I've overextended myself for the month of October, so I don't know if I get to read a spooky read. No. I'm an idiot. That's the moral of that story. Oh, that's um, not cute though. So Goodreads has, what did you say? I said that's cute. Oh. Sorry. I was talking about the little graphics on here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Goodreads has 48 books that scared the bejesus out of readers. So if you're looking for a scary book, um, 40 most popular horror novels of the last five years, 48 horror recommendations by terrifying tropes. So like if you want to read about ghosts or haunted house or certain creatures, that's Ooh, how they label them. Yeah. And then terrifying, our terrifying year, 2020's top horror novels, and then 48 horror recommendations to suit your reading mood. Um I really want to read some creepy books this month. I feel like I'm just going to have to carve out some time. Yeah. I really, really want to read some. Uh, No, thanks. (laughs) I'm pretty sure I got Mexican Gothic, and that's on the the list of 2020's most, the top four novels. Yeah. I want to read that. They all look really good. I was going to say The Shadows. You have that? I got the audio book, but I don't know if I listen. Year of the Witching. That looks good. Oh, I have this on audiobook. The only good Indian. Oh yeah. And I listened to um, Devolution by Max Brooks. So creepy and weird. And it's just like unsettling. Um, isn't that Mallory? It's the sequel to Bird Box. Yeah. Which I've also never read or watched. I watched it. It was good. <gasps> you did. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Mm. Ooh, well, horrid. horrid. Can yeah. Can we talk about that? Mm-hmm. September any releases? Maybe? Mm-hmm. In the Companion. I'm pretty sure I have that on my galley. On my read. There you go. Maybe I just need to bump some of these up on my reading list. That's, yeah. That's how that goes. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Announcements? Yes. So, um, for next week's Tea Chats that releases on October 9th, we are watching Where is Robert Fisher? You can find it on Amazon Prime. It's October 19th. What I said. 9th. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yes. October you turned into 19th. me. What's oh, that? <laughs> um, but yeah, we're watching Where's Robert Fisher. Yes. It's on Amazon Prime. A documentary about another, what do they call them? Family See? Annihilators. Yes. So insane. It's so crazy to just think about that. It's just, ugh. And I've watched some of it, but not all of it yet. So. I watched it. I'm so. But I'm ready to talk because I'm, I'm already so upset. ready to talk. <laughs> I've started just deep diving into things. It's not good, oh, and man. also good. 
And then also um, for episode 87 on October 26th, we are reading Fable by Adrienne Young. Yes, I'm so excited. Her second book, Namesake, is coming out soonish. 2021. 2021 soonish. I mean, like <laughs> within the next six months. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really excited to read it. I am too. I just love the cover. And I'm excited because we've read a lot of very important, but like social justice, like heavy books. Yeah. And this is going to be a thing. Fantasy. So I'm, I'm so excited. excited. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay, October new releases. We're here. Oh we're goodness. here. Um, we're gonna do like we did last time, ten in depth summaries, and then we're gonna do a rapid fire of the rest of them. Yay! I really like this. Okay, are you first? Oh, yes. Okay. You're so first. my first pick is the Invisible Life of Abby Larue by V. E. Schwab. Really quick, I'm glad. Like it, we, I, we kind of did. I take any of yours? No. Okay, you didn't take any of mine either. <laughs> it worked. Out <laughs> it nicely. did work really nicely. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so this is a historical fiction fantasy. Um, I Goodreads looks confused. I don't know if it's adult or young adult. Um, Maybe it's in that new adult genre, like area where it's hard so to pick. V.E. Schwab is usually what Victoria Schwab uses to publish her adult books. Yeah. So according to her, this is an adult book. Um, I would say it's an adult. When she publishes YA, she publishes under just Victoria Schwab. Yeah, I would. So. I would. I thought it was an adult book. Yeah. Okay. A life no one will remember. A story you will never forget. France, seventeen fourteen. In a moment of desperation, a young woman makes a Faustian bargain to live forever and is cursed to be forgotten by everyone she meets. <gasps> Thus begins the extraordinary life of Addie Larue. In a dazzling adventure that will play out across centuries and continents, across history and art, as a young woman learns how far she will go to leave her mark on the world. But everything changes when, after nearly 300 years, Addie stumbles across a young man in a hidden bookstore and he remembers her name. Oh, that sounds so good. Right? What is it? It's a YA it's historical adult. fiction or adult historical fiction? Fantasy, yeah. <gasps> it that sounds, sounds so good. I love. I love. Like she finds him in a bookstore, and he oh. remembers her name, and that's where it ends. Oh my gosh, that was that's a good that's a good synopsis right and there. A lot of the people that I follow on Goodreads have rated it five stars. Nice. But I've heard nothing but good things about V. E. Schwab. I've only read a few of her things, but yeah. I've loved everything that I've read. Hmm. So, and I feel like she always has that like dark. Yeah, everything she's written has that like. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that sounds so good. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So my first pick is Breathless by Jennifer Niven. You guys know how I feel about Jennifer Niven. I can't believe she has a new book. I'm so excited. So, okay. It is a YA romance, contemporary romance, and it comes out October 6th. So it's already out. So I'm already need, going to need to go buy it. <gasps> I didn't say what day that came out. Oh, shoot. Yes, please say. I, I don't remember. Stand by while I, I want to say yes, October sixth. Oh, cool! So they're both out right now. Oh, that's awesome because that one sounds like really good. I think mm -hmm. my mom would really like that. Really? Yeah. She likes fantasy like things. Kind of. Well, she'd like that kind of like mystery. Yeah. She likes mystery things. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so do 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 do. Before, with graduation on the horizon, budding writer Claudine Henry makes is making plans. College in the fall. Becoming become a famous author and maybe finally have intercourse. Is that okay? Is okay. I didn't. Yeah. Know. Sex. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and tell me what I can say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She doesn't even need to be in love. Then her dad drops a bombshell. He's leaving. Cla is it Claudie? Claudine? Claude's Claude? Claude's mother. Suddenly, Claude's entire world feels like a lie, and her future anything but under control. After. Claude's mom whisks him away to the last place Claude could imagine nursing a broken heart, a remote mosquito-infested island off the coast of Georgia. But then Jeremy, Jeremiah Crew happens. Maya is Maya is a local trail guide with a passion for photography. And, oh, oh, Maya, because of Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my brain just didn't understand what was happening there. <laughs> so sorry. Okay. Um, Maya is a local trail, trail guide with a passion for photography and a past he doesn't like to talk about. He's brash and agno... <laughs> I haven't had one of these times in a long time where I, I can't read. 
And even more infuriating, he's the only one who seems to see Claude for who she wants to be. So when Claude decides to sleep with Maya, she tells herself it's just sex, nothing more. There's not enough time to fall in love, especially if it means putting her already broken heart at risk. Compulsively readable and impossible to forget, Jennifer Niven's Lum- luminous new novel is an insightful portrait of a young woman ready to write her own story. I think it sounds so good. I think it sounds like a quick, super, like, maybe a little bit of heart-crushing read. But, yeah, again, like, all She's the people. at that. Most of the people um, that I've read it that I follow gave it a five stars. There's a couple three stars in there. So, yeah. It's going to be hard to follow up. Um, what's that called? All the right places. Yeah. It so breaks my heart when I read mm-hmm. it, guys. Ooh, when you need to work on I'm trying it. to work on looking at the, the tubers. Oh, man, 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 man. Okay. My next pick is called Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. And I think it's really funny because my first pick was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. And now I'm like Invisible Girl. I like the name Addie LaRue. Mm-hmm. I like how it flows off the tongue. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell is a thriller. Surprise, surprise. Uh about um, time. I really love Lisa Jewell's things. What? Said you took us how long to get to a thriller? Oh, <laughs> things. I meant I love her books a lot. Ah, okay. when's it come out? It comes out October thirteenth. That's Ooh, my brother's birthday. Yeah. Okay. So synopsis time. Owen Pick's life is falling apart. In his 30s, a virgin, and living in his aunt's spare bedroom, he has just been suspended from his job as a geography teacher after accusations of sexual misconduct, which he strongly denies. Searching for professional advice online, he's inadvertently sucked into the dark world of incel, involuntary celibate forums, where he meets the charismatic, mysterious, and sinister Bryn. Across the street from Owen lives the Fours family, headed by Mom Kate, a physiotherapist, and Dad Roan, a child psychologist. But the Forrest family have a bad feeling about their neighbor Owen. He's a bit creepy, and their teenage daughter swears he followed her home from the train station one night. Meanwhile, young Sapphire Sapphire Maddox spent three years as a patient of Roan Forrest. Feeling abandoned when their therapy ends, she searches for other ways to maintain her connection with him, following him in the shadows and learning more than she ever wanted to know about Roan and his family. Then, on Valentine's night, Sapphire Maddox disappears, and the last person to see her alive is Owen Pitt. With evocative, vivid, and unputdownable prose and plenty of disturbing twists and turns, Jewel's latest thriller is another haunting, atmospheric, stay-up-way-too-late read. Oh, that's a lot. There was a Mm -hmm. lot to unpack in that. Her books are like that. There's Um, so many things happening. I read uh, The Family Upstairs earlier this year, Mm -hmm. I think. Um, that one was really good. There's a lot happening. Um, watching Then you, She Was Gone, I have on my bookshelf. I, think, I can't remember if I read that one or not. I feel like I did. Um, but I also re- wrote, I read Watching You. That one was good. Oh, that sounds so good. I love her books. Yeah, that was intense. That was just a synopsis. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my next pick is Quiet No More by Nikki Barthelmess. Bartholm, she's, I know she, I know, I, okay, Bartholm, Barthelmess, yes, because I saw her um, say it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had to find that out. Okay. So this is a YA contemporary. It is coming out October 13th, and I got this on NetGalley. So I'm Ooh. super excited to read it. All right. College freshman Victoria Parker is trying to move on with her life after surviving sexual assault by her father and six months in foster care. She's focusing on the positives, attending college, living on her own, repairing old relationships and making new ones, or making new ones and getting involved with an abuse survivors activist group on campus. But everything's thrown into disarray when a strange woman shows up, claiming to be Victoria's aunt and asks Victoria to lie about what happened to her. With her father sentencing in a few months, she's nervous about having to share the truth of what happened with a judge. She's not even sure if she has the strength to go through with it. But when her fellow club members begin to pressuring her to speak out, Victoria has to decide how to share her story while remaining true to herself. Oh, my goodness. It sounds so intense, but um, I really am. What would be my last pick? I know. I know. I don't know what's going on. 
I mean, okay. I guess it's being talked about more. So that's I think that's good. That's why I try to promote that kind of stuff because, you know, women live that every day. And so yeah. we have to, and, and some men. And so we have to, you know, kind of keep topic, talking about it, right. even if it makes us uncomfortable. I'm so glad you picked this next one. I love the cover. I'm so excited. So cute. <laughs> this is Blaze Wraith Games by Amparo Ortiz. Um, this came out October 6th. It's a YA fantasy with dragons. <gasps> Drag- dragons. Dragons. I don't do that tongue thing. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Lana Torres has always preferred dragons to people. Same. In a few weeks, 16 countries will compete in the Blaze Wraith World Cup, a tournament where dragons and their riders fight for glory in a dangerous relay. Lana longs to represent her native Puerto Rico in their first ever World Cup appearance. And when Puerto Rico's runner, the only player without a dragon steed, is kicked off the team, she's given the chance. But when she discovers that a former Blaze Wraith superstar has teamed up with the Sire, a legendary dragon who's cursed into human form, the safety of the cup is jeopardized. The pair are burning down dragon sanctuaries around the world and refuse to stop unless the cup gets canceled. All Lana wanted was to represent her country. Now, to do that, she'll have to navigate an international conspiracy that's deadlier than her beloved sport. Oh, doesn't that sound so good? It sounds so good, but I don't want any of the dragons to get hurt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's all I could think of. I was like, no, no dragons get hurt, please. I got the arc of this, and I've had it on my TBR for the past, like, four months. Girl. So I'm, like, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it, and I haven't gotten to it. So now I'm like, okay, October, I'm going to read it. You have to. It I sounds know. so good. It really does. Jealous. <laughs> All right, my next pick is Charming as a Verb by Ben Phillip. Uh, It is a YA contemporary romance, uh, and it comes out October 13th. I'm so excited. My brother's birthday. I'm going to say that. That's your brother's birthday. (laughs) Happy birthday, Daniel. I don't know if he listens. I know. (laughs) To be fair. Screw you, Daniel. I wouldn't blame him. All right. Henry Halty. Halty Wagner. Wagner. <laughs> like, I knew I was going to mess that up. How would you say it? Halta Wagner. Halta Wagner. Can charm just about anyone. He is a star debater and popular student at the prestigious Fate Academy, the dutiful first generation Haitian son, and the trusted dog walker for his wealthy New York City neighbors. But his easy smile, but his easy smiles mask a burning ambition to attend his dream college, Columbia University. There is only one person who seems immune to Henry's charms, his intense classmate and neighbor, Corinne Troy. When she uncovers Henry's less than honest dog walking scheme, she blackmails him into helping her change her image at school. Henry agrees, seeing a potential upside for himself. Soon, what started as a mutual hustle turns into something more surprising than either of them ever bargained for. This is a sharply funny and insightful novel about the countless hustles we have to keep Keep from doing the hardest thing, being ourselves. Aww. Sounds so cute, right? It really does. Ugh. I want to know what his dog walking scheme is, though. I also do, too. <laughs> like, what is he doing? I need to know. Like, what are you doing? I need, yes. <laughs> are you really, are you just not walking the dog? Must be. I mean, that's smart. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, my next pick is The Lives of Saints by Lee Bardugo. Um... It is a YA fantasy short story. Okay. Book of short stories. Sorry, that sounds weird. It came out October 6th. Um, and here's the little, okay. it's not really a synopsis. So, like, it has, like, let me, let me interrupt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, it, um, is it in the Grishaverse? Like, how does yes. it fit in with other bo- her other books? So, I think. Okay, I can see it. Can you get it? <laughs> Okay. It was on my nose, and I kept, like, messing with my nose, and then I was like, I see it somewhere. <laughs> I can't remember what the other one was called, but she wrote another book that yeah, was, like, Yeah, um, I remember that. Fairy Tales Within the Grishaverse. Is and this I think kind this of like similar. that? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Dive into the epic world of international best-selling author Lee Bardugo with his beautifully illustrated replica of the lives of saints that is story sancta featuring tales of saints drawn from the beloved novels and beyond. Out of the pages of the Shadow and Bone trilogy, from the hands of Elena Starkov to yours, the Istori Sanc- I said it before. Yep. Sanctia is a magical keepsake from the Grishaverse. These tales include miracles and martyrdoms from familiar saints like Sancta Lisbetta of the Roses and Sancta Ilya in Chains to the strange and obscure stories of Sancta Ursula, Sancta 
Maradi and the Starless Saint. The beautiful collection includes stunning full color illustrations of each story. Cute. The cover is so pretty. It's very pretty. I love it. I was very confused at first because the cover that it shows on Goodreads and the cover that shows on Amazon and everything is split in half. Yeah. And that's not actually what it looks like. It's oh, just really? The red one. I don't why know does it why do that? It looks like that? I don't know. But look at what? I just looked up and saw Oh, it's our friend. <laughs> He's back to He's murder us. The wall. Oh, I don't like it. <laughs> what do we do? Why is there more like in the folds of the What do we do? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't think he's moved. So just let him be until he moves. Okay, you gotta keep an eye on him. Your and cricket then, watch. And then we'll never yeah, then we're gonna flick him and then <laughs> just go get your son. He loves to catch bugs. Okay, so this is so crazy what just happened. So I my next book is Long Way Down, the graphic novel by Jason Reynolds and illustrated by Danica. I didn't know how to pronounce her last name, so I reached out to her and she just emailed <gasps> us back. Oh my god! Like right now, isn't that crazy? So um, she told you how to pronounce. Oh, because I really, she's like super talented. And she's illustrated a bunch of other things, and she's an artist. And I just wanted to like give her some props out there. So um, Nov Goradov, but honestly, it works phonetically Nov. anyway. Dov. Nov, Nov Goradov. Nav Gorodov. Thank you. That's a beautiful name. So it is illustrated by Danica Nav Gorodov. So you should go give her some love. She's actually illustrated a ton of other books that I didn't Did realize. You? Yeah. Um, if it will load. Now I'm freaking out. I'm like watching out of the corner of my eye. That's that close so to me. crazy. <laughs> um, the Undertaking of Lily Chen. Refresh, refresh. Slow Storm. So she's like illustrated a lot. And she's also done just like artistic things as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She illustrated a long way down. Comics and graphic novels. She's done under yeah. Uh Slow Storm. Yeah. So her email her email. Her website is Danica Nov Gorodov. Yes. And you should go give her some look, guys, because she emailed me back, which is so cool. Because a lot of people don't, to be honest. Um all right, so this is um the graphic novel of the best-selling New York's best-selling novel, Long Way Down. Uh, Will's brother, Will's older brother, Sean, has been shot. Dead. Will feels a sadness so great he can't explain it. But in his neighborhood, there are the, the rules. Number one, crying. Don't. No matter what. Number two, snitching. Don't. No matter what. Number three, revenge. Do. No matter what. But bullets miss. You can't. You can get the wrong guy, and there's always someone else who knows to follow the rules. So, from what I've heard, the story takes place from like he's literally in the elevator. His just his trip in the elevator. Oh, shut up! Oh my gosh, I really want it. I want to see all the illustrations. Isn't that so cool? She wrote, I'm just like, so. Yeah, I love that she wrote that. Right? Like, she's, well, us, I put us, but <laughs> yeah. she's just like incredibly talented and she's, yeah. I so go give her some love. I honestly didn't even know they were coming out with a graphic novel edition. So. I didn't either. When I saw it, I was very excited because love that. So cool. So cool. Okay. Okay, what's next? <laughs> Sorry. I was. I oh up. you were looking at the cover. I was making sure our friend didn't move. I was like, "Did you move?" Oh him? shoot, I forgot about him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> no. Okay, um, my next pick is called "The Times I Knew I Was Gay" by Eleanor Cruz. Oh, uh, this came out October sixth, and it is a graphic memoir. Oh, did I say which what in that was coming out? Yes. Okay, I think you did. Good. I don't want to make sure. This one sounds so good. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so Ellie has, Ellie always had questions about who she was and how she fit in. Oh my God. Yay, you're having a Samantha. <laughs> uh, start over. Okay. Ellie always had questions about who she was and how she fit in. As a girl, she wore black, obsessed over Willow in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and found dating boys much more confusing than many of her friends did. As she grew older, so did her fears and a deep sense of unbelonging. 
From her first communion to her first girlfriend via a swath of self-denial, awkward encounters, and everyday courage, Ellie tells her story through gorgeous illustrations, a fresh and funny self-portrait of a young woman becoming herself. The Times I Knew I Was Gay reminds us that people sometimes come out not just once, but again and again. That identity is not necessarily about falling in love with others, but about coming to terms with oneself. Full of vitality and humor, it will ring true for anyone who has taken the time to discover who they truly are. Oh, that sounds so cute. It really does. Um, it reminds me a little bit of Spinning by T- Tilly Walden. Yeah. Because that's kind of what that story is about, too, is about her, like, realizing who she is and stuff. Yeah, that's so good. And it's another graphic memoir. Ugh. If you like graphic novels, you need to go look up Tilly Walden because I love all of her stuff. <laughs> um, but Eleanor Cruz, the all the illustrations look really cool. And it's another arc that I got that's sitting there like, just How dare read you? me. Of yeah. I read it. You know. <laughs> okay. My last one is Magic Dark and Strange by Kelly Powell. It comes out October 27th, and it is a YA fantasy. I know. We're buzzing. Uh, The reason I really want to read this, it says, The Bone Witch meets Sherlock Holmes. Stop it. In this thrilling historical fantasy about a girl with the ability to raise the dead who must delve into her city's dangerous, magical underworld to stop a series of murders. Get out. Right? Okay. Catherine Dolly. Yep, that's what we're going with. Catherine Dolly is an unusual has an unusual talent. By day she works for a printer, but by night she awakens the dead for a few precious moments with loved ones seeking a final goodbye. But this magic comes with a price. For every hour that a ghost is brought back, Catherine loses an hour of her own life. <gasps> oh. When Catherine is given the unusual task of collecting a timepiece from an old grave, she is sure that the mysterious item must contain some kind of enchantment. So she enlists Guy Nolan, the watchmaker's son, to help her dig it up. But instead of a timepiece, they find a surprise, the body of a teenage boy. As they watch, he beco- he comes he comes back to life, not as a pale imitation that Catherine can conjure, but as a living, breathing boy, a boy with no memory of his past. This magic is more powerful than Catherine has ever encountered, and revealing it brings dangerous enemies. Catherine and Guy must race to unravel the connection between the missing timepiece and the undead boy, or the mysterious magic could mean the difference between life and life and death for all of them. Doesn't that sound so good? The Bone Witch, Sherlock Holmes, and then like watches. Yeah. What? <laughs> You're like, give me this book. Did they looked into my brain. They did. I want this. <laughs> You're like, oh, there's a someone posted a little gif of um, Jake from. Uh, Adventure Time. Adventure Time, yeah. yeah. He's like, yay. And it's so perfect. It's so cute. <laughs> yeah, it's so cute. Where's my button? Way to go. All right. October, new release is Rapid Fire. Rapid Fire round. Rapid Fire. Rapid Fire. Rapid Fire. Rapid fire. Go first and you let me go first. Uh, you want this one? Yeah, I want this one because okay. I'm going to read it soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the first one is The Brightest Night. What are we calling it? The Darkest Night or yeah. the Shadow Night or something? You said something that didn't make sense. <laughs> I thought me? Darkest Night sounded good. Who, me? But then you're like. The Darkest Night sounds like the Batman. The Dark Knight. Okay. A. A. All right. This is The Brightest Night by Jennifer L. Armentrout. It is the third book in the origin series. Uh, this ver- series follows two characters from the Lux series, Evie a human and Luke an origin, which is a powerful Lux and human hybrid. The Brightest Night comes out October 20th and is a YA fantasy. I can't wait. I need to catch up. I need to reread it. <laughs> All right. Next one is The Tower of Nero by Rick Riordan. It's the fifth book in the Trials of Apollo series. The series follows Apollo, who was cast out from Olympus and turned into a teenage boy. The Tower of Nero is the final book in the series in which we find out if Apollo will get back to Mount Olympus or be stuck on Earth forever. This book came out October 6th, and it's a YA fantasy. Ooh. Is it YA or is it middle grade? It's YA. Wow. I know. But I think it could be middle between middle yeah. and YA, to be honest. I was just curious because obviously, like, we're still reading Percy Jackson. So, yeah, you guys need to catch that, up. You need, there's so many. I've read so many of them. I know. I'm okay. a little, I, I've kind of gotten off that train a little bit just because I'm reading more, like, varieties of books, right. but it's still good. Okay. The next one is Come On In, edited by Addie Al- Alsaid. Oh, I forgot how to 
say it. I'm going to say it that way. I'm so sorry. Um, this explores the joys, heartbreaks, and triumphs of immigration with stories from authors who are themselves immigrants and the children of immigrants. Oh, my God. Yes. This book or anthology comes out October 13th. Oh, it's in a YA. It's a YA anthology. And it comes out October 13th. I know. It's going to be so good. We need to do another anthology, anthology episode. I honestly think we do. In which we actually read the anthology. But then, like, we miss so many. There's so many I new know. ones. I do think we should, like, have, like, a anthology read. Yeah. Maybe that should be one of our a book month choices. Where we just read anthologies. Ooh, it should be a book choice. I like that. My contact is being weird. I can see something over here that's not there. It's my contact. I know. My eyes are bugging me, too. Bugging me. Good contact. Bug. Good. <laughs> is it dead or is it just watching? I don't know. Maybe it's our biggest fan. Let's name him. Henry? Hi, Henry. I don't know. I'm not happy. <laughs> he hasn't moved, but he did attack us last time. Oh, I want to read this one. So you want to read two in a row? No, you just... Or should I just do it out of order? Duh. Yeah, do it out of order. Oh, no one's going to be content. <laughs> okay. The next one is Night by Alexandria Warwick. Oh. It's the second book in the North series. This dark and seductive book follows, continues to follow a Pay's journey with the Faces Stealer Demon. May comes out October 8th and is a YA fantasy. So I read North. Yes. Is that the first book? It's the North series. Oh, no, no, it's it's not, North. Co- it's not North. It's um Oh my god, I read it. And I just looked it uh, up because I wanted to look at it. Oh, um why am I like this? Isn't it like Shadow or something? Below. It's called Below. Below. Um, it's such shadow a good, below. <laughs> it's such a good book to read, like in the winter time because yeah. it's all snowy. Ooh. It's so good. It reminds me a lot of like the labyrinth. Oh yeah, because there's a labyrinth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Daughters of Jubilation by Kara Lee Corthorn. Corthorn. Corthron. Corthron. Thank you. I was like I. Sh- Car- Lee Corthron follows a black teen as she finds her place among a family of women gifted with magical abilities. What? This book comes out October 13th and is a YA historical fiction I'm fantasy. It's so, it looks so good. I know. Right. Yeah, add these to the TBRs. Next one. This is all your fault. I could hear that. I was going to send <laughs> This is all your Henry, fault. Henry, quiet by- down. <laughs> by Amina May Safi. Follows three young women set over the course of one day, determined to save their indie bookstores. It comes out October thirteenth and is a YA contemporary with LGBTQ plus characters. I'll say if you don't say it like you're supposed I to. I think I have this arc too. You do because I really wanted to read this book. I you think suck because it happens. That's why I was thinking of um because it all happens in the course of one day. Yeah, Can we just talk about another book like that. Long way down. Yeah, I feel like there was another one. There was another one. Don't know what it was. Nope, never happened. Okay, <laughs> next is Storm the Earth by Rebecca Kim Wells. It is the second and final book in the Shatter the Sky duology. This duology follows Marin as she joins the Emperor's ranks to save her abducted, abducted girlfriend. Storm the Earth comes out October 13th and is a YA fantasy with LGBTQ plus characters. <laughs> <laughs> forever, that's how we're going to say it. That's how we have to say it forever. Um, the next one is Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker, which is a pseudonym for Sean and McGuire. Oh, I didn't know that. She has two pseudonyms. So she has three, that I know of, three names that she publishes under. So funny. Anyway, it's a middle grade fantasy novella about two children who couldn't be more different from one another. They stumble upon a magical world while on their on their way home from school. And they must find themselves and each other in order to make it out. Oh, that sounds so good. It came out October 6th. <gasps> cute. It sounded really, really It cute. does. It kind of sounds like something the boys would like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Okay. We Were Restless Things by Cole. Nagamatsu. 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 It is a coming-of-age story about three teens following a mysterious death in which a boy drowns on dry land far away from any water. This atmospheric contemporary weaves fantasy and reality. It comes out October 6th and is a YA genre, bending book, mystery, mystery, thriller, fantasy, and magical realism. I thought it sounded so That sounds so good. good. I, as soon as I, I read that, I was like, oh, that's magical realism. You have to go gonna... read the full synopsis because it's just like... Nuts. Yeah. And you like read it and you're like, what? can I read it right now? Can I read the whole <laughs> book right now, please? <laughs> right now. 
All right, our next one is plain bad hero- he- heroines. Oh, plain wow. I'm so bad sorry. Plain bad heroines by Emily M. Danforth. Um, it is about the Brookhance School for Girls, where two young girls were obsessed with an author and her work, and then they were found dead. <gasps> the, the girls? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. The school is eventually shut down after more mysterious deaths, and now a movie is being made about the school. But as the actresses arrive on set, because the set is at the school, uh-huh. uh, the past and the present meet, and the school's curse continues. Plain Bad Heroines comes out October 20th, and is a gothic horror novel. Oh, that sounds so good. Uh-huh. As soon as I saw, like, School for Girls or whatever, I was like, okay, sign me up. Yeah, we, we have yes, our little, little, little tropes we love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Foreshadow, edited by Emily XR Pan is a compilation of stories that reveals and celebrates the magic of reading and writing for young adults. So um, this is a book that comes out October 20th, and it's a YA anthology. I I know. And it's just like YA authors coming together to talk about the magic of reading and writing, and I just think that's so amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next is The Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Meniscalo. It's the story of romance and witches. When Amelia finds her twin sister dead, she will do anything to get revenge, even if that means using dark, forbidden magic. The Kingdom of the Wicked comes out October 27th and is a YA fantasy slash historical fiction. And she is the author that wrote... Shouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> the, the One of the books is like Killing Dracula and Stalking Jack the Ripper. Oh. Jack the Ripper. That's what it is. Yeah. Know that. That's awesome. I love this cover, by the way. I do, too. <laughs> Okay, the next one is Among the Beats. <laughs> Beats. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> I thought you did. <laughs> you wait, just wait. Want... We just need another extra S. There you go. No, <laughs> Beasts and Briars by <laughs> Ashley Poston. Follows a magical girl, her little fox friend, and a powerful bear as they search the dark woods for a way to save her home. This book comes out October 20th and is a YA fantasy. And that's another one you should read this not full synopsis because I, it was very generalized down. Yeah. But, um, I love that I actually put the link in there for you because could you imagine if you kept type among the beats and briars? Like, <laughs> is this about do yeah. I shoot shirts? I love, <laughs> I love the cover too. Okay. Yes, it's so pretty. Okay. And our final ish pick um, The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Haro is another fantastically witchy book that follows the Eastwood sisters as they turn the women's suffrage movement movement into the witches' movement. This book comes out October 13th and is a YA fantasy historical fiction. Love that. This is the author of... Why do you keep I, doing this to yourself? I don't know. I had it. <laughs> you look at me like, no, I don't know. I really like this because it's in the... It's, in the suffrage time period and like then like they're yeah. finding they're turning into witches because people aren't gonna let you know it's just I oh, love it. Love it. So this is the author of um Ten Thousand Doors of January. The Ten Thousand Doors of January. Oh yeah, I out? remember when you read that. I did not read it. <laughs> I think <laughs> we talked about it. <laughs> No, you read something else with like Ten Thousand Doors, right? Uh yes. So I'm not You're losing not my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I did not read that. I did this liar. I really wanted to though because it's beautiful and like so many people absolutely love this book. Well, yeah, it has a 4.09 on Goodreads. That's like impossible. I know. Okay, our two I other know. like oh, I, I, know. I know. Don't you know. <laughs> Don't know Megan's what that was. Back out. I know. Uh, oh. <laughs> um, the two paperback releases that we want to briefly sit, talk about are Nancy Drew, The Curse of Michael oh, Ostow. The Curse by Michael Ostow oh. and, sorry, I read it wrong, and Carolyn Nee on October 13th, and Sadie by Courtney Summers on October 25th. Yay. That's exciting. I think her name's Keen, just to throw that Keen? out. Keen? Oh, what I say, Nee? <laughs> I think my brain just, like, mixed up the letters. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about that, Keen. <sighs> How? I mean, that we did it. We did it. Go us. How? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Dang. Oh, dang. We better hurry in this. Hurry this up. <laughs> all right. Well, that is all of our October new releases. If you have any others that we missed or that you want us to hear about, let us know. Yeah. Tweet uh, us. Tweet us. Yes. Tweet, tweet. 
hate hate that I just said that. Tweely, do do do. I don't think we can do much more. <laughs> we have to pay for it. <laughs> uh, go check out our videos on YouTube. There, something. <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> um all of our links are down below as always um as well as our social medias check out our patreon yeah thank you nicole and hannah for being yes, our awesome patrons. thank you always and forever for dealing our crazy with our crazy patron videos and all the random stuff we post it's uh-huh. just it's just insane over there if you want to support us that's the way you can as well all right thanks for listening we'll see you next week bye bye